In this demo, I'd like to show you a very simple HTML file that I've created. We'll take a look at it in a browser and then see how it's built using a popular online HTML editor. So here's the file in question. It's called hello.html. The .html extension tells me this is a HTML file and it will contain some HTML code. Let's look at this file in a browser by right clicking and saying open with Microsoft Edge. The file is loaded from my disk and then it displays its contents and here you can see that this simple file is just showing me the text hello HTML and it's also changed the title of the page to be my first HTML page so there you have it a very simple HTML page let's now go to an online tool and try to create this page from scratch okay so how did we create this page well there are many ways to create HTML files and we'll show you a few throughout this course. At this point in time, I'll introduce you to JSBin, which is one of your options. And to do that, I'll open up a new tab and go to JSBin.com. Here I am inside JSBin. You can see that I'm using the free version right now. I haven't logged in, I haven't registered or done anything else. I'm just going to use the site as a kind of HTML playground to create our simple HTML page. And we'll have a quick look around the layout of the site. Here you can see there's a panel on the left, which is a HTML panel to edit HTML code. And on the right, you have an output panel that will eventually display whatever code you write on the left-hand side. And the site can cater for other languages, such as JavaScript, CSS, and so on. And you can also share code snippets and do lots, lots more. I'd encourage you to browse around. But for this exercise, we're just going to use the site in this simple format. So as I said, this page on the left hand side, it was opened by default when we navigated here and it contains some HTML. There's no content or output yet and we'll get to that shortly. But this would be the most basic HTML code file that you would need to create in order to produce your first HTML page. You could probably do a little bit simpler, but this is a very good template for us to start with. So why don't we just walk through some of the tags and elements that we see right in front of us. The first thing we see at the top of the page is a doc type declaration. This always comes before everything else in a HTML file. It's actually just some information for the browser about what version of HTML the page is written in. And in this case here, it signifies that the page is written in HTML5. The next tag we see is the HTML tag and as you can see we have the beginning tag here and the ending tag at the end which means everything on a HTML page is contained within these two tags so all other tags must be contained or nested within this tag and it tells the browser of course that this is a HTML document in this example we then have a head tag again a beginning and end head tag and as you can see this head tag contains other types of elements you can see in this example there's a meta and a title element and there are more than these two we've actually seen the title element in action already it defines the title for the page that's used in the browser tabs or toolbar and the title is also used in the browser history so for example in our in our page we had typed my first HTML page and that's where that would be created so that's the head tag next up is the body element and as its name suggests, this element contains the body of the page, meaning all of its contents. As you learn more and more about HTML, you'll see there's lots of different tags you can put in here to do various different things within your HTML page. But for now, as in our example, we'll just type some text. Whoops, hello, HTML. And as you can see, output is now appearing because we have some content in our body. And I can do a lot more here if I want to, but for now, that's just showing you that this page has created the same output as our original page, hello HTML, and the page title we set is my first HTML page, and that's the amount of code it takes to construct that page. Today I'd like to give you a brief overview of a site called CodePen. Already at the site here in my browser in codepen.io, so you should browse there too. And here I am at the landing page and I haven't logged in, I don't have an account. What I'm going to show you now is just a very brief overview of what this site can be used for. A 
pen in this site is kind of like a code snippet. It's code you can write, or you can also explore pens that the community has put up on the site for you to consume. Let's start there. Let's have a look at what a pen might look like. To do that, I'm going over here to, on the top right to the search button, and I get a nice big search text box. And if I just type in a term that I'm interested in, for example, button, and I just wait a brief second, you'll see that that search returns 936,000 pens. So these are pieces of code that other people have shared that contain something to do with buttons, the keyword button. And so this is the list that you'll get back and you can explore and do a lot of configuration on the search. To see the code behind one of these, you would click on the tile that has been returned and I'll do, the, I'll click on this one and you can see an editor opens up and it has a HTML pane, a CSS pane, a JavaScript pane and an output pane. This is just an example. We won't go into the code in this example, but you can see that the very much live, there's a live preview of what's been shown here from the code out down here below in the output window. So let's go back. That was, that was just an example of a pen that someone else has created and they've decided to share publicly. Why don't we try and create our first pen? To do that, we're going to come over to the create button here, click on new pen. Now you'll notice I still haven't logged in. I'm just using the site as a public visitor. So I click on new pen and an empty editor opens up. You can see the three panes, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. A nice big output panel here down in the bottom. If you don't like this view, go ahead and change view and you can reconfigure it to have editors on the left, the editors on the right, etc. Now I'll just stick to the default view. Also only going to code some HTML. So here I'm going to maximize the HTML editor, which slides the others out of view. Have a nice lot of space here to work with. To save some time, let's just paste in some HTML. And what you see here is that the preview is live, as in when I make a change in my code, it shows up in the output practically instantaneously, which is a really great feature change the code to watch that in action. So I'm going to change my code, hello code pen. I'm going to wrap it in a header, a H1 header, and we should see that text get larger in the output panel. So I'll put in my tag, and you can see that it's actually expanded, which is great. A few other nifty little features that you can use here. If you get your HTML into a state, you're not happy with the actual how it looks on the screen, you can say tidy HTML. We'll try to indent it a little bit better and spread it out so that it's more readable. You can even go as far as going into the settings and under behavior, use tabs over spaces. So that's a nice feature. So that's the code editing part of CodePen. And I encourage you, if you don't want to download a tool such, you know, other editors, go, you can browse here for free and write some code and see it appear in the output window. Take other people's code and play with it, explore some of their cool creations and try that stuff out as well. Another reason I wanted to introduce CodePen is because if you look at our course, you may come across this editor here in line inside the content that we've created. This is an embedded code pen editor. In this example, it shows you two panes, the HTML code and the result. Switch off the result and just show the HTML by clicking on the result button, vice versa. I can also edit in line here. So for example, if I go into this paragraph in the code and I say something like, hi, that will refresh on the right hand side, the actual output, which is interesting. I'll just ignore that doc type warning for the moment. That's not really important right now. This is a live editing experience embedded into our course, but you can go over to CodePen, which is where we've been, and you can navigate to that actual pen that was created. And here you can see that in the CodePen site. And you get yourself an account on CodePen, be able to do stuff like just fork this, which is effectively copying this actual pen into your own account so you can play with it, use it, and so on and so forth. So that's the round tripping I just wanted to make sure you see. So when you come across these editors inside our course, you'll know that that's 
really a code pen editor inside the, the content that you can then go and use on the code pen site or use it directly inside the, the, the content itself. So that's it. A very quick look at the popular online editor and front end code playground called CodePen. To get Visual Studio on your machine, simply visit code.visualstudio.com, just as I've done here in my browser. Visual Studio Code is a very powerful and popular code editor. It's completely free and it supports a multitude of programming languages. And as you can see here, it's also available for multiple platforms, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. One of the really great things about this editor is that it's open source and it has a very active community behind it. And that means that great features and fixes are released every month. If I scroll to the end of this page, I can see that the number of stars in, in GitHub, which is basically the number of people who have showed appreciation or like this, this editor, is quite high. So there's a lot of activity 